Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to George Mack Plays the Classics. SNK is back, and luckily they aren't tormenting me with another iteration of Akari Warriors. No, this is POW, Prisoners of War. You are codenamed BART, and it's up to you to infiltrate the goon organization looking to shut down world trade in order to make fat cash off of smuggling. Your plan is to get captured and then destroy the entire operation from the inside. You begin by blowing up your cell at a POW camp, and then start punching, kicking, and shooting through four levels of goons. I had this game as a kid, remember it differently than it actually plays. I guess 30 years is a long time. The A button kicks, which is stronger than your B button punch, at least until you get the brass knuckles power up. That makes your punch a way better attack. Power ups are found in side screens, either tents, trucks, or other entrances. You have to take out a swarm of enemies and receive brass knuckles, bulletproof vest, or life restoration. Enemies come on screen and take different numbers of hits but you don't know for sure how many they're going to take until you hit them enough. Some enemies are equipped with knives, which do a lot of damage if they hit you. Occasionally there will be a knife drop, which is good for one throwing attack. Conversely, if you see an enemy equipped with an M16, he might drop it when you knock him down. Now you shoot with the A button in bursts of three bullets. If you can line your enemies up, you could take multiple down in one hit. B button becomes a rifle butt, which you'd think would be great, but the hit detection is incredibly flawed. You're better off shooting and going back to punches and kicks. Bosses are at the end of each level. The chopper at the end of level 1 requires collecting grenades and throwing them back. This feels like I've done it before, but can't put my finger on it. The second level boss is much easier if you have a bulletproof vest, which causes bullets and thrown knives to bounce off of you. He also throws dynamite, which basically kills you if you're caught in the explosion, but can be avoided by jumping with the A and B buttons together. The instruction manual gives the height of the final boss as 7 foot 8. His weight is 231 pounds. That's Manute Bullfin. When it comes to creating POW prisoners of war on NES, graphics get a 1.0. The backgrounds are decent, but there's a ton of flickering when it comes to sprites. Sound gets a 2.0. SNK composes some alright music. It's at least frantic enough to get the feeling across. Gameplay gets a 1.0. Attacks are slow, and hit detection is off. The M16 should make you feel unstoppable against enemy knives and kicks, but it doesn't. Difficulty gets a 1.5. The levels drag on. And if you run out of lives, it's back to the beginning of the level. At least their unlimited continues. Button Factor gets a 1.0. You can probably get some enjoyment out of this, but it's not going to be a whole lot. Overall, POW Prisoners of War earns a 1.3 and gets a D+. It's a tough sell when you play better games in the genre. Well, that's going to do it for me for today. Please make sure to like this video. Let me know what you think of POW Prisoners of War in the comments. And please subscribe to Head Drop Productions here on YouTube because we want you here for each and every video we release. Because it is your destiny.